Hey everyone, this is Ross, and believe it or not, we've been taking some cuttings today. But these are not of the fig cuttings. These are of pomegranate cuttings because the figs are just not ready. Um, today's Saturday. In fact, the video that came out on Saturday, two days ago, I'm going to publish this video, I think, on Monday. On Saturday, we did a video talking about the upcoming frosts and hard freezes and, and low temperatures that are going to come into the Northeast um, and what to expect and really to calm everybody down and talk about the process. Um, we had that low this morning. It was 22 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. I didn't exactly document it. However, it was a really hard freeze. Everything had frost on it in the yard. I was out here actually at 4 a.m. It was a late night and um, I wanted to make sure the cat was okay. Um, and making sure that the cat had a, a warm enough environment. But um, this is exactly what we want. This hard freeze coming in here is pretty much getting the tree all to drop all of its leaves. And this is normal. This is exactly, like I said, exactly what we want. And see how that just came off so easily? In fact, it's so easy that if I were to just leave these leaves alone, they're all going to fall off in the next couple of days anyway. I don't have to come in here as some of you guys do for whatever reason and actually take off the leaves manually yourself and then do the pruning. Um, you know, there's a lot of sap flow involved there, a lot of blisters <laughs> you could potentially get. But that's the key is that when we take off these leaves after this big frost, we're not getting any bleeding. There's no sap flow coming out of these branches which is perfect because all that sap is being stored in that wood and over the next couple days is going to go down into the roots of these plants. It needs to go down into the roots. We make our cuts here at the top. We want to make sure that there's no sap flow and I wanted to see today if that was the case, if there was any sap flow. So I made some cuts here, just minor cuts on my Socorro Black and there's definitely some sap flow, um, quite a bit. So even though we had a 22 degree Fahrenheit low, a big freeze, which you, was what you would consider a hard frost, um, we are uh, still not completely dormant with the figs, which is mind blowing, right? And a lot of you guys already put them away. <laughs> well, I, don't, I still don't really get it. Um, you know, this is all doing it for us. The nature, mother nature is doing this process for us. We just have to be a little patient and not worry too much. Um, I did also come out here and harvest the rest of the figs. Believe it or not, the frost really helped ripen the rest of my figs. Um, I harvested a whole bowl today. I'm sure many of them are not that good, but uh, we may have some gems in there somewhere. Um, in fact, there's probably still some on here, but these are really rock solid hard and they're not going to do anything the rest of the season. It's only the figs that were starting to swell and uh, turning soft. They, they really get that ripening process sped up by that frost. Um, so I harvested a whole bowl today. That was pretty cool. Um, we, we trimmed the pomegranates and I think the pomegranates personally are a little bit different than the figs, but they can handle very, very similar temperatures as the figs. Um, but I truly believe they're not as hardy. They're not as um, resilient as the fig. Um, in fact, they are a bit stressed out by water stress more than figs. They're, they seem to be a bit more um, finicky than the fig tree. So I let them get hit with that frost, which they're all sitting right here. We trimmed them all and I didn't do a video on pruning them, but I, I have done a video on pruning pomegranates in the past. So you guys can go back, but I really just chopped them all down, gave them a nice haircut at a certain height. And that was it. I didn't really get too fancy with this. You know, putting in some crazy pruning techniques. I just wanted to get them underneath the sunroom and put away. Because those trees likely are dormant and don't really need to be out here any longer. I need to use my time wisely because I have so many trees. I need to prune every single tree. Um, the other tree I need to get in underneath the sunroom, I just realized this is my uh, Morris Niagara Mulberry. And it also is out here. Um, in fact, I probably shouldn't have let it come out here. I, I, uh, I don't know how hardy this thing is. People have told me it's actually quite hardy. And 
I don't necessarily believe them because I also heard the opposite that it's not hardy at all. So um, if you have a true Morris Nigra and you have this really close node spacing here and the buds are huge, you know, that's almost the size of my fingernail here. The buds must be massive on this. And you have a true Morris Nigra. Let me know how, um, what the lowest these trees have been through for you. So far I'm seeing 22 degrees. I have never done this before this low. Um, I would like to plant one in the ground if I can, but they really don't do well here. Even if, uh, really even in a pot, I'm lucky to even get what I'm getting, believe it or not. They are really susceptible to disease. But anyway, and the humidity here. But uh, back to the figs real quick. So that's really what we're gonna be doing is just letting these things do their thing over the next few days. Like I said, on Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, um, or maybe it's even Thursday morning, we're gonna have another couple of low temperatures, um, somewhere around the 20 mark again. So 20 or 21, it could also drop even lower than that. I'm not too worried about that. Like I said, I wanna get these trees into dormancy as quick as possible. Um, and then over these next few days, they're really gonna go dormant. They're really gonna be, the sap flow is really gonna return back into the roots. And I can then come in here to the Socorro Black and all the fig trees here, make my cuts, and then put them away for good um, for the winter time. And I wanna talk to you guys all about that. We're gonna cover the pruning, we're gonna cover the techniques that I'm using to prepare them for the winter time. Um, I also am gonna be out here, I still have actually, believe it or not, some air layers out here. I have some air layers on these trees. This is a black Madeira KK air layer that we're gonna probably sell or hold on to it this, um, this winter time and sell it in the spring. I have a number of air layers out here that have been in this 22 degree Fahrenheit cold. I have a number of small potted trees, potted figs here. I have potted persimmons and potted mulberries. They all are out here withstanding this thing just with the rest of them. Uh, what I will do with these little guys, I'm gonna bring them underneath the sunroom now though. They just needed that one, that one hard frost. I don't wanna put them to, through uh, too much effort or too much pain here. Uh, we'll put them underneath the sunroom and uh, they'll finish off their dormancy process there um, and be ready for the following season. Um, I'm also going to be doing probably some very minor root pruning. This particular pot here, my Italian 258 is in. Um, I don't like the size of this pot. I'm gonna put it into a, a smaller pot that has better dimensions to it. That way I can store them a bit better. And it's also black rather than brown, which is gonna help with the heat. Um, so we can do some root pruning. We can do some actual pruning. We're gonna come in here um, and really inspect these trees very closely during the pruning process, but also when I come in here and really inspect the trees for any scale or overwintering pests, it's a good idea if you're not selling your cuttings or at least take your cuttings and then spray your trees with a horticultural oil. I think that's a great idea. And that's gonna really help them get rid of any overwintering pests that they may have. I'm also getting rid of a number of trees. In this entire row here, this whole thing right in here, some of the, all of these are marked for something I'm getting rid of, whether it's uh, you know this variety right here and I'll keep the other one or I'm gonna get rid of the entire pot. I'm gonna get rid of both varieties, um, cull them both and call it a day and, and really diminish and lower the amount of pots that I have to take care of. The effort here this winter is to have as many of the potted trees, potted fig trees, potted pomegranates underneath the sunroom, especially the, the pomegranates where they've done very poorly for me because they've been in the greenhouse, and the greenhouse is a rough, rough environment in the spring. If you can't get in there and water, and if it's too dry in there, um, the pomegranates leaf out very quickly, and they suck up too much water, and they get dry too quickly, and they've suffered in the greenhouse for years. Um, and it's just because of the simple fact I have too many trees 
in the greenhouse. So far, these are the only trees I've designated here that will go inside the greenhouse. Um, there's there's going to be more. You know, um, this is a pretty small amount right here, <laughs> but um, we're going to have probably two layers thick of trees. Here's some more air layers here. We have a Delson Wami Grand there and a uh, this is uh, De La Roca, De La Roca. And some of these, unfortunately, the air layers on some of these, you know, they don't have the thickest roots. Even though we put these on at the right time, put them on in the beginning of August, we gave ourselves three whole months. The fact that these are potted trees, they don't have nearly as much energy and they don't go through this process nearly as quickly as if I had a, a tree in the ground. Um, so it's really important if you want a successful air layer, you got to do this kind of soon. Pick your battles. You may not want to put on too many of them. Um, yeah, it's not always 100% guarantee success, but it is a very reliable form of propagation on these figs. It's interesting to see how some of these trees got hit with this frost and some of them didn't. You know, this Violet de Bordeaux here. It's kind of crazy. I think because it's right up against the house, it's not, it didn't really get hit too much by that. Oh, yeah, it definitely did, but it doesn't look like it got hit that hard. Um, and you can see, this is the tree we talked about on Saturday's video uh, with this limb here that's not fully lignified. This actually looks all right. Um, even though we got down to 22, we're gonna be fine. This wood's not damaged in any way. Um, you definitely would be able to see something here at, at a pretty recent point after the frost came in. Um, and when we take these cuttings, we'll be able to tell if this is alive, if there's green, right? If there's the cambium is intact, it's green, it's not brown, it's not turning brown. Um, you know, that's the key. Um, so for the most part, all of my wood though was hardened up really well for this frost and for um in preparation of the winter time here's a branch that we rejuvenation pruned this this is planera and it just um put on too much growth too late in the season and that's why this branch here isn't lignified in fact this is pretty soft up here so i would imagine that some of this may have taken damage i won't know for probably a couple days like i said with the other tree the Viola de bordeaux we were looking at but that one I'm not going to prune, right? There's no, there's no reason to prune that. We're starting over from scratch. But if you look around, I mean, every single potted tree I have is completely hardened. And it's a beautiful, beautiful sight, guys. It really is. This is, I'm going to have probably the most highest quality cuttings I've ever had to offer you guys. So this is a really really just an overall successful year i mean i can't really say i did many things wrong at all and um i hope you guys are listening and and uh and watching carefully here because i've been sharing all this information that i've gathered over the last six years or so um, these figs here this is going to be a pretty common question we're not going to get many figs at all to ripen at this point we have some black madeira on this one that's swelling and we're going to get a couple more frost and i may actually be able to harvest a few more figs off of this so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna worry about it you know i'm still gonna wait about another week or so before i can really prune all these trees anyway so i'll leave on all the fruits um leave on all the fruits until i actually do the pruning when i do the pruning all these leaves have to come off and all these fruits have to come off now, if you wanted to leave these fruits on, it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. I'm going to get that question a million times over the next couple of weeks. Should I leave the fruits on? Should I take them off? I'll tell you what, if you leave them on and this tree, let's say you get this tree into the greenhouse, it's a potted tree instead of an in-ground tree, you may actually ripen these figs the following year. So leave them on in the greenhouse leave them on in your storage area, they will actually ripen at some point next year. And they're called held over figs is what people um, refer to them as. And it kind of acts like a, a very early Breva. It's a very early crop of the year. If it's an in-ground tree, this is not gonna do anything in my climate. 
You may get some of this to hold over if you guys live in a really warm place, like a zone nine or a high zone B, a warm zone B, or I'm um, sorry, a warm zone eight. These may ripen for you. Um, so, you know, it's up to you. You can take them off, get a fresh start to the season. That's my personal preference. Um, but again, you can leave them on and end up getting a lot of figs early in the season. And that's a nice little bonus. I know a lot of you guys like fruit. <laughs> um, so yeah, it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, if you're gonna wrap this tree, cause this is an in-ground tree, you need to take off all these leaves. You need to take off all these figs. You need to take off all the sources of humidity the tree will release some humidity from these figs and you'll create mold underneath that tarp or whatever you're wrapping the tree with. Um, you'll create mold and you'll kill your tree. Um, not a guarantee, but it's a high chance that that's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. We're, we're pretty much wrapping it up here. We're going to document the whole thing. This is just a nice little overview to talk about what's to come and what I'm going to be doing and ex you know, really explaining everything down to exact. Tomorrow, I'll take off these air layers, put them in, in pots, um, get a couple things more than I need to get put away, and um, that's it. The, the figs will not be touched, will not be touched for at least another five days or so. Um, so stay tuned. I know a lot of you guys were interested in cuttings. All that stuff is going to be sold on figbid.com. Please do not message me individually. Um, even international buyers can go there. And I have some instructions for those types of people that we will be um, offering for you guys. So I will be shipping internationally, even through Figbid. Um, yeah, check it out over there. You can check us out on the blog, figboss.com. And check us out on social media because that, that'll let you guys know, the blog and the social media will let you guys know when I'm selling these cuttings to you guys and offering these up. I, I'll probably do a couple giveaways this year, uh, get rid of some things. I have uh, a number of plants I'm going to be digging up. We'll talk about that. You know, things like my goji berries and the blackberries, we're going to be digging up some stuff and kind of getting rid of it. So stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, all this information. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.